Charlie Cole is a hacker, hacker extraordinaire, hardware, software, intel, data dropping, whatever you need, I can get it. New and improved. It's sort of like your SMI light when you're on the ground. Data transmissions, drone controls, scanning. Gotcha. All you gotta do is slave it to the SMI, do a couple of calibrations, and you're good to go. Thanks, Charlie. He's the most inexperienced when it comes to high stakes, life or death situations. It's a steep learning curve being on, on this plane with, with Briggs and Grimm and, of course, a Sam Fisher. Who is Andre Coben? Andre Coben pretended to kill my daughter to give someone leverage over me. Whoa. How is he even still alive? Good question. When you've got, you know, this mix of the characters you mentioned, you know, Sam, Grimm, and, and Briggs, and then you've got this, this you know, kind of tech expert guy. Mm -hmm. How does that, you know, how does your role get into that? How do, you, how do you fit amongst the dynamic? Well, there's a lot of animosity between Grimm and I, and we, we are familiar with each other from the get-go in this game. And, and I think, you know, Grimm is a very by-the-book uh, practitioner, and um, Charlie is more willing to bend the rules of law, which, which uh, is, I think, where he sees eye to eye with Sam, because Sam's, you know, in his own way, will do it his own way. And um, it's good. At, from the beginning, Sam's on, Sam's on Charlie's team. As much as there's the, a lot of jokes at his expense and, and he's sort of the run to the litter on the team, uh, he's invaluable. Charlie, rustle us up some transport, would you? Some of you have blends, panel van. You got it. So talk to me a little bit about the, the experience of, of, of doing something like this. I mean, you're in a video game, but this is obviously very cinematic. Talk to me about how, how performance capture yeah, is well, working for you. It's super cinematic, but it's also like doing theater. I mean, you don't have anything. Like, I don't know, I don't know how much you can see around here, but this is our, this is our set. It's a, it's a big carpet. It's like, it's exactly like playing in the basement when you were a kid. You, you, you Im are imagining everything. All of a sudden you have panels here and you gotta, you know, challenge the animators to like, I'm just gonna do this now and later you're gonna have to make sure that it looks like my fingers are doing something. So it's, you get to let your imagination run wild and just play in this sort of like empty space. It's more like theater, but most like playing in your basement as a kid. And obviously when it comes to the nitty gritty of what Splinter Cell Blacklist is about, it's, it's the exact opposite of, of playing around. When, right. when you think about, you know, kind of the, the scope of this game and, and how um, feasible the threat is, you know, how, how much do you attach yourself to that idea? Again, not getting into details, but people, you know, people are dying. And, and especially for my character, who's, who's not used to that. I, it's, I find I can identify with that. You're around all these people going, oh yeah, someone else has just been killed. All right, we need to move on. We need to do this. This tactical operation needs to happen. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a second. Someone's just died. You know, and you kind of want to, you know, take a moment and, and sort of process that. But there isn't. You know, it's, 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 um, that's part and parcel of these sort of situations. Um, the collateral damage uh, is going to happen.